hey what's up you guys welcome back to my channel i know this is a really weird setup a little, little spooky right a little crazy this is not doing any good for my under eye bags it is that is definitely scary that's probably the scariest thing you're gonna see all this this whole video so you're welcome so it's the month of october and you know what that means. It's time for spooky content. Oh man, that's gonna haunt me. So no pun intended. So for this entire month, I have some Halloween related videos coming to a screen near you. But as you can tell from the title of this video, I'm gonna be telling you some scary stories, some sister spooky scary stories. Oh my God, that was everything. <laughs> Most of these I'm getting off of the internet, off of Instagram, off of Twitter. Take them with a grain of salt. Okay, kids, I just wanna have a good time. I just wanna sit in the dark in my hot ass room with this blanket over my head, like for literally no apparent reason other than um, for the vibe <laughs> to share scary stories with you. And just enjoy this month. It only comes once a year, you know? So let's do it. A few years ago, a friend of mine was babysitting for a wealthy family one night. As you would expect, the house was massive and had quite a few rooms. Before the parents left, the father told her that he didn't want her walking around the house and that he would prefer if she just stayed in one room to watch TV. After she put the kids to bed, she began watching a movie but started feeling really uneasy about this big clown statue that was facing the corner. She went to get a drink and then called the father and explained, Hey, the kids are in bed, but is it okay if I switch rooms? The clown statue is really creeping me out. The father responded firmly, Get the kids, get out of the house, and call 911. She asked what was going on, but he told her to only call back once she had gotten out of the house. With the police on the way and with the kids out of the house, she called him back. He explained, we don't have a clown statue. The kids have been complaining about a clown watching them as they sleep, but we assumed they were just nightmares. Oh my God. I've heard the story before, but it still gives me chills every single time. You need to like listen to your children, okay? If they're telling you that they see some shit staring at them, like, I mean, it might be sleep paralysis, but you never know. Like, listen to your kids, okay? Moral of the story, listen to your damn kids. Okay next story i really like this like just doing this like i might be blinding you but like it's really fun and like i like i don't know do you like this excuse me uh sir and or ma'am do you know why i pulled you over tonight mm -hmm. yes it's because you have not clicked that like button yet so please my friend click that like button or i'll arrest you i will a few years ago i was on a cross-country trip by myself to a family reunion. After falling behind schedule, I pulled off at a motel located on the back road. I went up to the window to check in and the clerk eyed me, a college age girl, up and down and asked me if I was traveling alone. He insisted I paid with cash, which set off some red flags in my mind. When I went into my room, I looked under the bed and noticed a cockroach. That was it. I was out. I decided to leave the room and just sleep in the back of my SUV. I curled up and went to sleep for about an hour before I was woken up by someone talking outside. I looked out and saw the clerk standing outside my room. It was about 3 a.m. at this point. He finished speaking on the phone, then went over to my room and unlocked the door and walked in. He then turned on the light and then a minute later, he came back out with another guy and slammed the door. They angrily talked for a moment and then walked over to my SUV. I covered up quickly, but he still tried to open the locked door. As they walked away, I climbed into the front seat, started up the car, and drove off. A few weeks later, I called the cops once I figured out the name of the motel to tell them what happened. They told me the place had been shut down a few days before I called. This is like scary because it can be like a reality like that. Like, I feel like this, this could happen and not scary. A 12 year old boy who saw his own father murdered by a family friend avenged the death of his father by killing the alleged murderer in a revenge attack he had planned for 12 years. He cut him into 12 pieces, one for each years of weight. I mean, honestly, you gotta do what you gotta do. <laughs> I'm just kidding, do not, do not take that advice. Okay, so this next one is called Sleepwalking. 
There have been a number of murders in my small town in the past two weeks. The police say that there is a man that breaks into people's houses between 3.15 and 3.45 a.m., murders them, and then feasts on the remains. I set up surveillance cameras around my house for safety, and after a week, I decided to watch the tape. I didn't see much, but I did notice that every night around 3.15 a.m., I would leave the house. Oh my gosh. The next one is called Instant Messenger. On March 2nd, 2011, a young girl named Suzanne was using her laptop. Her parents had gone out to dinner, leaving Suzanne home alone at 8 p.m. The teenage girl was very popular in school and very socially active, so she spent approximately two hours conversing with friends on Facebook. Shortly after 10 p.m., Suzanne signed into her internet messenger account under the username suzyq13. Immediately, she received an ad request from a user with the nickname <laughs> Young Lover 69 I cannot, like... Okay. I'm gonna continue, okay. She added him and the two began a conversation. The stranger told her that he was an acquaintance of one of her school friends and asked if she could send him a link to her Facebook. Being a trusting girl, Suzanne dut dutifully obliged. The following is an excerpt from their chat logs. Oh, really? <laughs> okay, let's see. Young lover 69 looking at your pics, BRB. Wow, you're so beautiful. Really? You think so? You've got beautiful hair. OMG, thank you. You've got beautiful eyes. Well, people do say they're my best teacher. And you've got a beautiful nose. Aw, that's sweet. And you've got a beautiful neck. Okay, I get it. Thanks. And you've got a beautiful body. Err. And you've got a beautiful heart. Okay, that's enough. I bet all of your internal organs are beautiful, bitch. Don't be playing with that shit. Don't be playing with that. Now you're just being creepy. I want to see them. Oh, goodbye. I want to cut you open and look inside. Leave me alone. I want to run my fingers through your entrails. Stop messaging me, you freak. I want to remove your organs delicately one by one. If you don't stop, I'm calling the police and kiss them lovingly. Stop and caress your intestines, you sick weirdo, and then play with them for hours. I'm putting you on ignore. Susie. 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 And then she replies, like, really, bitch? Like, just block his ass. Anyway. What do you want? Your blood all over me. Get lost, you total psycho. I can see you. Get lost. I can see you, Susie. Yeah, right. I'm watching you right now. No, you're not. Yes, I am. I can prove it. Stop being such a loser. Peekaboo, I see you. If you can see me, then tell me where I am. In your house. Well, duh. Chatting on your laptop. Again. Duh. Sitting on your couch. Big deal, it's not that hard to guess. Ask me where I am, Susie. Which, why am I about to cry? I always get so sensitive with these things. <laughs> ask me where I am, Susie. Oh my god, leave me alone, you creeper. If you ask me where I am, I will stop messaging you. Okay, then. If it'll shut you up, where are you? In a house chatting on a laptop, hiding behind your couch. Later that night, Suzanne's parents arrived home and found their house strangely quiet. Upon opening the living room door, they were confronted by a horrific scene. The room was covered in blood, and their 13-year-old daughter's corpse was lying in the middle of the floor. She had been sliced open from the top to bottom, and her internal organs were stern about her. Police found a bloody knife and a laptop computer sitting behind the couch. The laptop was open and running instant messenger police were unable to trace the laptop. It had been purchased the day before the murder and had only been used once to access in instant messenger. Today, Suzanne's murder remains unsolved and the killer is still on the loose. I wonder how true this is. If it's true, I'm so sorry. Like, I do not mean um, any disrespect. Okay, so I heard this story before when I was younger and this, it really creeps me out, okay? I don't know if you guys have heard it, so I'm just going to read it to you. It was one of my favorite scary stories to tell when I was little. Not little, like, that's kind of creepy, but, like, younger. Like, I don't know, a preteen or something. While she was studying for her finals, a girl had spent the evening working late in the library. After she was done, she went back to her dorm room to pick up some clothes, books, and fresh clothes before heading over to her boyfriend's house. Because she didn't want to disturb her roommate's sleep, she decided not to turn on the light. After quietly gathering her stuff, she finally left and spent the night at her boyfriend's house. 
The next day, she came back to her room, only to find it surrounded by police. They asked her if she lived there, and she replied yes. They took her into the room, and there, written on the wall, in blood, was the sentence, Aren't you glad you didn't turn on the light? Her roommate had been murdered the night before, and the killer was still there while she was picking up her stuff. That, that is some scary shit right there. That is very scary. Okay, so I think this is going to be the last one. In 1998, a woman named Carol Werher underwent surgery to remove her eye. Having suffered with chronic eye pain for almost 10 years, and after 14 unsuccessful surgeries to relieve the pain, which was gradually worsening as time went on, removing the eye was her last resort. During the procedure, Carol woke up because of the anesthesia. Her vocal muscles were paralyzed. Despite trying, she could not scream. Instead, she just had to lie there, unable to move. She was aware of and remembered the whole experience. Because of her horrendous experience, Carol has since become an activist for other victims of anesthesia awareness. I look like the nun or something. <laughs> I'm not sure if like this exact particular story of, of Carol is, is true. This shit does happen. Like anesthesia, like wearing off or like they didn't give you the right amount and you can wake up sometimes during surgery and you can literally feel everything that is happening to you and it's so scary when shane dawson did he did a whole video dedicated to this and that's how i know he actually interviewed um someone who went um through this shit's scary shit's terrifying i can't imagine like doing brain surgery or, or cutting someone cutting out my eye like and you could feel everything. You could feel the burning. You could smell like your skin and your, your tissue and the flesh being burnt off you. I am terrified to have that happen to me. So that's that's a real thing that actually um, does happen, in case you didn't know. Um, I'll leave Shane's video linked in the description if you're curious and you want to know more about it. So that was the last story of the night. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed. Leave some scary stories in the comments down below. As I mentioned earlier, I have some very spooky videos um, coming to a screen near you. So I look forward to filming those and I look forward to uploading them for your viewing pleasure. So make sure that you are subscribed and you turn on my notification bell to be notified every single time I upload. As always, I love you guys very much and I will see you in the next one. Bye.